It was a foggy day on the Snowden Hill Railway. The fog was in full blast, and all the engines were finding it hard to work. At night, a thick fog would roll in, covering both the hills and mountains with poor visibility. One night, it was particularly bad, and I thought it was bad for any trains to run at night. All the engines were stuck in their sheds. I've been through far worse than this. There's no need to close the railway. Fog during the day is very different from fog at night, Padan. Coolie's right. Even with a headlamp, it's dangerous to go out when you can't see like two feet in front of you. Yes, well, all the same, we can just sit here and do nothing. And anyway, what's so bad? We can't just all derail about that. Heh. <laughs> I wouldn't joke about that if I were you, Padan. Oh, not you too, Ernest. What did they do to you since you're the oldest engine? Oh, well, I think so. I need to tell the story of Darwin again. Huh. Oh, not that again. Oh, tell me, Ernest. I haven't heard it. Okay, then. Back in 1898, it was just the five of us. There was me, Wilfred, Coley, and Shane. We all mainly worked this railway. And, all, and only we then were transporting passengers, and we didn't do the goods work like we did today. But there just wasn't just the four of us then. We did have our number one. His name was Darwin, and he was of course named after the poet himself, you know, Charles Darwin. This of course went to his smoke box and made him conceited and unholding too much faith in his automatic brakes. He would never keep a good lookout. He would roll down the line looking anywhere but at the track. You ought, you ought to, be to be careful, careful Darwin. Darwin. I'm, I'm concerned. concerned. That, that doesn't, doesn't look, look safe, safe what you're doing. doing. <laughs> you're the, the one, one who needs sense. sense. I've got the automatic, the automatic brakes, brakes which I'm going to apply myself. myself. And also an air brake. So what more do you want? More sense from you. No engine can stop at once if he isn't ready to obey what's coming down before him. <laughs> That'll be the day. Now if you excuse me, young Ernest, I'm off. One day, I was going up and waited at the station for Darwin to come in down to pass me. And as I waited, so it happened. One moment, he was on the track. The next, he rolled down the mountain. Shane was further down on the middle station, and he could recall seeing Darwin fall down. Soon, Godred came to a rest at the very, very bottom of the mountain. One passenger panicked in the coach, which had stayed firm. He jumped from it and bendented his head on the rock, getting a very severe cut and died later in hospital from the loss of blood to the head. Our old manager had no money to mend Darwin, so he was put to the back of the shed. There was a rumour that his parts were used to mend us, but he would never be that cruel. Instead, he was scrapped because he became a waste of space. This is all true, you know, you lot. And plus, I think that Darwin's ghost might be out there. Next day, the fog wasn't as bad and all the engines continued with their jobs, but they were all thinking about Ernest's story and being respectfully quiet. Oh, Majesty, I think I've made them just go too quiet for a long time. That evening, Wilfred was making his way back to the sheds. He was taking some trucks down to the sheds with him. Oh my, being out so long in this weather, that's really playing tricks with me and my eyes. Suddenly, he heard something in the fog. <laughs> 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 
What was that? Hello, Wilfred. It's been a long time, hasn't it? It's me, that number one. <laughs> oh no! Wilfred suddenly realised he was going down to the bottom of the buffers near a hill. He slammed on his brakes just in time, but the trucks were not so lucky. Oh cripes, I'm out of here! O'Brien and Erin were travelling back to the sheds together. Soon they came up to a red signal. Oh, it'll be good to get out of this fog and back into my warm cosy shed. I've been transporting coaches back up the hill all day. I'll say what you mean. Suddenly, the two engines saw something through the mist. Well, two new engines to terrorise. Welcome to hell, boys! <laughs> Did, 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 did you see that? Y yeah, I, I did. Oh, our signal's down. Let's get out of here. The hermit returned from escorting some passengers up High Peak. Tired and still a long way off from the sheds, he started to take a shortcut through the entrance next to a spooky old abandoned quarry mine. Soon, he approached a red signal. Suddenly, he saw something on the Argentan line. Welcome, Railcar, to your grave, Storm. <laughs> Darwin disappeared, and then all the mine shafts began collapsing into the ground. Oh my! I'm gonna get out of here! Adan had been out all day too. That's funny. I can't recognise a thing. Not even near a foghorn, but that can't be right. Uh, try once more. No one's reply. When I get back, I'm certainly gonna complain to the customs launch. If I ever get back. Oh dear, where am I? Huh? What was that? Hello, number six. Look who's here to say hello. <laughs> oh, 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 no, 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 my, no. Oh, no, that's not for me. No, I'm, I'm going to go sleep in this shed. I'm not moving till daylight. They won't spot me. Miles from home. <laughs> Calder, Shane and Catherine were busy unloading medical supplies at the summit station. That's odd. I just heard a train whistle. All the others must have reached the shed by now. Well, they must have been sent on an emergency mission or something. Nah, that can't have been a whistle. Must have just been an owl carrying up by the wind. There it was again. This surely just can't be the wind. This really does sound like an engine's whistle. Do you recognize me? Whoa, 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 what's that over there? Yes, you do recognize me then. Oh no, 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 no. That can't be who I think it is. Yes, number four and number five. It's me, the number one. <laughs> Oh my! Oh, Ernest! It was foolish to come here tonight, Darwin. And I think it's time you better realise the error of your way. And plus, we all, for we all forgive you for what you did. We all forgive you for holding faith in your brakes. Please, please stop. We all want this to be over with. So, put an end to it. So be it. Goodbye, Ernest. Old friend.
So that's it, is it? Yes. I'm afraid so. Now let's get back to the sheds. It's been a long, hectic night. Come on, you three. Let's go home. An early sun had burnt off the fog, but Padan was still asleep where he had docked up. Oh, go away, Darwin! Oh, no, please, please, please don't hurt me! Oh, 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 Reb! What are you doing here, eh, Padan? What's this about, Darwin? Oh, 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 did I say Darwin? Oh, oh, I must have been dreaming. I lost my bearings in the fog and stayed here for the night. <laughs> here? That is funny. W what's so funny? You're only like a few yards away from the sheds. It's over there. Look! It's everybody. I'm seeing Darwin for myself. We've all seen him. Some of us have seen other things happening too. But th he was Darwin, I assure you. I saw him. Silent. Phantom of the Rails. So you admit Darwin's story is true now, Pedan. Alright, what's all this about Darwin? His ghost's been around, sir. Oh, right. I see. Well, as for the trucks that Wilfred's like spilled last night, they will, will be picked up later today by the workmen. Anyway, Wilfred, isn't it time you went and got your next train ready? Oh, oh, right, sir. Right. I will, sir. Thank you.